I was really attracted to this story, a story about orbital debris, uh, because when we started to research it, we realized that, number one, it's a cutting-edge science story, and it's one that hasn't really been told before. I think the other thing when, when we started to look into it is that it was a story that really sort of demonstrated something that I don't think most people think about, and that is how deeply we are connected to space. Great, yeah. Tom. The last one was great. We'll move on to the last two paragraphs, which are your parting words for the movie. They send signals commanding satellites to adjust orbits by firing up the onboard thrusters, keeping them out of harm's way. Yeah, I think we can move on. The space junk idea interested me because I'd vaguely had the idea that there must have been tons of the stuff up there. But somehow, my thinking about it never really extended to what's it doing now? The idea of it still sort of being in the same position it was placed years ago hadn't really occurred to me. We've launched man-made objects into space and they run into each other and it creates a cascading effect where more pieces generate more pieces. All this stuff is just zooming overhead at hypervelocity speeds. And it's a threat. It threatens our, you know, our space environment, something that we totally rely on. Yeah, this is great. You're adding so much. We've been envisioning your voice since. Oh, good. Yeah, well, so we're so fun. excited. It's, good. it's a nice story. Yeah. There's so much more to learn. You know, we're still in this very much this infancy stages of orbital debris and to be able to understand it and to come up with the solutions and how to clean it up. But I also think if there's, as we are as human beings, we're just, we're on this big quest. And so we'll, there's a will to find solutions and how to clean up space.